Okay, so I got asked recently about uh, USB on the go devices by Loic Jagger. Uh, I want to buy a multi hub because I've got more than four USB devices which I want to attach to the Raspberry Pi. Do you have a dedicated video about the OTG adapter you've got? I've read that USB C port not only accept power but also data. Also, like to have an advice which I can buy and which I have to avoid. So, you can use this, uh, which is probably the cheapest one on the market, um, but it is just a single adapter. And the way this works uh, is you'd usually use it with a mobile phone. So, you would plug this into the phone, you would plug the charger into this, so there's both micro USB, uh, and then you have a separate socket. So, it means you can plug something like a USB stick or a gamepad or something like that into your phone, but still get power to your phone. But not great for the Pi. Uh, I mean, it works, but it, it doesn't give you an awful lot of options. This is the one I used to use, uh, first of all. So power adapter goes into there, and then this would go into the Pi. Obviously, this is micro USB, so you need a micro USB to USB-C adapter for this one. And it's pretty cheaply made. It's very thin, and uh, it used to get very hot. And when it used to get hot, it used to uh, start performing badly. Uh, but it's it's been very useful because it I've been able to use it with uh, a Windows tablet and various other things. So I'll keep it, but I wouldn't recommend it. The one that I've had the most success with definitely is this one. Uh, this is an on-the-go adapter. It's USB-C all the way through, uh, and it also has two USB-2 and a USB-3 socket. So if you want to plug that into the Pi uh, to use it as a USB on-the-go hub, You'd need something like this, USB-C to USB-A, which I don't think came with it. I think I bought it separately. I've got a few of these. Um, so that means I can plug it into the Pi. And here is my Pi. So you can see I've got two things plugged in already. I've got a game controller and I've also got, uh, this is my mouse and keyboard adapter. So if I plug that in, There you go, so what I've got now is I've added another two sockets really to the Pi because obviously it takes up one socket and it's got three on it. So let's, I'm gonna turn on screen capture now as well and plug that in. So you can see on the screen capture now, uh, the hard disk has shown up uh, in two partitions. This is my Windows, uh, Windows 10 hard disk and so it's got Windows here and a boot partition here. So you see one thing has been added. Now if I wanna plug something else into the hub now. So if I plug in, for instance, this one, uh, this has got pin OS on it, so loads of operating systems, so all sorts of things are gonna fly up on the screen now. <laughs> there you go. Loads of operating systems and boot partitions have shown up now, and in fact, I have to close them all down by keeping clicking. There's that many up and running. Um, good thing about this is you can copy between devices. So say I wanted to get something onto that Windows partition, I could. Or say I wanted to put something into RetroPie, I could. Um, so now I've got, uh, what, four things plugged in. I need another two things to plug in. So I'll use my RetroPie SD card. So this is an SD card in a USB 2 adapter. Plug that in and we'll see that another thing will show up. That's the 128 gig ROM that's on the top there. So that one's shown up. So if I wanted to say drag something into RetroPie, I could open that up, I could go to RetroPie mount, I could find a ROM, copy it, and then I could put it in this RetroPie partition and then that would work when RetroPie boots. So if I wanna plug one more thing in, uh, and this is a 750 gig uh, physical hard drive so it takes a bit more power uh, what I would normally do to plug something like that in is to actually supply power to this on-the-go hub so you can see it was working as is taking power from the Pi uh, and working with an SSD drive and also the SD card uh, but they're quite low power so this is a Pixel 3a charger uh, and I picked this one because it's a 3 amp so if I plug that in and then plug it into here. That provides power to uh, the hub, which means that it's not taking any strain off the Pi, which is good. Uh, if I then plug in the physical hard drive, so that's this one here, so you can see the whole cable. So that way up. And you can 
possibly hear it start up. I could hear it start up in here. So you can see another one's come up now. Now I will open this one now. That will be the boot partition and this will be the operating system. So let's close that down because this has got a massive build of RetroPie on it. So if we're going to Pi, RetroPie and ROMs, there is all sorts in here because this is Damaso's uh, 200 gig build. So I've still got loads of room left on my 750 gig drive. But if I wanted to find a game uh, and I wanted to copy that over to my standalone RetroPie, which is this one, which is within pin OS, uh, I could just grab something to so say Adventure Island, copy that, go to RetroPie and home, Pi, RetroPie, ROMs. Game Boy and paste that in. So then when I launch that pin OS version of RetroPie, so like a multi-boot system, then Adventure Island would show up. Uh, but also if I boot it with this 128 gig stick, that'll add the ROMs that I've got in here to the Damaso 200 gig build. Uh, so you can use both at the same time. So you can use the ROMs that are on there, but also the ROMs that are on my USB stick. Anyway, another thing I was going to do is just show you how uh, On The Go works with providing power to the Pi. And this is a slightly different setup. So I need to turn this off first and wait a little while so I know everything stopped. Well, I know this hard disk has stopped because the light's gone out. So now you can see I've just got HDMI in here. The keyboard adapter, I have to move over to the On The Go hub. Uh, and this is only because Windows 10 at the moment hasn't got support for the USB uh, sockets. It's, it's just not there yet. It will, it will come in the future, but at the moment it doesn't work. So this is my Windows 10 drive, the 60 gig Kingdian that I'm using. Uh, so let's plug that into the USB 3 socket. So that's SSD being plugged in to the on-the-go. There's power and there's also mouse and keyboard. That's the bare minimum we need. We still have another socket if we need to use something else. Uh, and I would usually use that for Ethernet because the Ethernet doesn't work with Windows 10. Again, this is only peculiar to Windows 10. At no other time have I used an on-the-go adapter with my Pi to provide power. So I've got my Windows boot on this SD card and the operating system runs on here. That's, that's how it's configured. Uh, I need to take the SD card out, which is, I've got used to this now. So basically just flick, flick that outwards and then pop the Windows boot in and then plug in and as you can see that's booting up Windows and in fact I'll let it run in real time you can see I'm getting a, a lightning bolt in the top right hand corner uh, and that basically is saying that it's not getting enough power so if you've had a look at my other Windows video I had cobbled together, well it's actually something different at the moment, um, but this is currently a USB fan which I use to cool this if I'm going for severe overclocking. There you go, Windows 10 is booted up now. Um, but uh, if I was using it properly I would supply extra power with the GPIO pins, um, but uh, I'm not doing it for this video. So let's shut that down and show you just the last thing that I uh, thought I'd try with on the go. And I'm going to do a video with iPad and on-the-go, which is not so much if you're into all the Pi stuff, but uh, this on-the-go adapter works really well with the iPad as well. So it allows me to plug all sorts of things into my iPad, uh, which is very, very handy. So the other thing I was going to try is take that micro SD card out and pop in something with an OS on. This is Raspberry Pi. OS 32 bit I think, no it might be 64 bit. Uh, so I'm still in on the go mode, I don't need that. So this configuration now is power going into the on the go adapter. Uh, actually I can plug my, because I'm using ordinary Raspbian that, that will work normally now. So I've got power going into the on the go adapter, I've got mouse and keyboard in there uh, and this is just HDMI out. So what happens if I plug this in now? So you can see it boots up and does work fine uh, in this configuration but there's no real gain to using it and it does come up with the lightning bolt in the top right hand corner of the screen uh, but also if I plug in a USB device 
it doesn't actually recognize it it doesn't show up so there's uh, there's no there's no gain to using an on the go adapter in this way uh, yes you can do it but it doesn't allow these USB ports to to work so so there's no gain and also it starves a little bit of power getting to the Pi so in the way that I originally showed it that's worth it because then you've got two more USB sockets uh, because one is taken away by plugging it into the Pi uh, and also you've got USB sockets that are separately powered from the Pi so if you've got high drain devices then that strain is going to go from your other power adapter. Okay so I hope this helps thanks very much for watching please like and subscribe.